Peace to you, peace to you, all my light beings out there. Welcome to God Body TV, where I, um, I explore the gods, I talk about all the gods, and extraterrestrial content as well. Star Nation. Um, subscribe to my channel if you like interested in anything like that. Uh, God Body TV, okay, we're talking about uh, Lord Shiva. Why is Lord Shiva depicted smoking weed? You know, and drinking marijuana. Here we go, let's go. Today, let's take a look at why Lord Shiva is portrayed as smoking weed and drinking alcohol. In fact, we have a temple called Kal Bhairav Temple in which Lord Shiva is fed alcohol every day. There is a mouth carved in the lingam and alcohol is poured through it as a ritual. Every year on Shivaratri, which is the night dedicated to Shiva, his devotees smoke weed before praying to him. Why is Lord Shiva depicted? And you know about anything about Lord Shiva? Lord Shiva, um, you know, he depicted with the snake, snake around his neck, and he blew. And think about Osiris, uh, Batar. Batar was blue. Osiris was green, blue. You know, we got uh, ancient gods that are depicted as different colors, but uh, the Kushites are really the uh, the Indians, the so-called East Indians, which are no nothing but the Ethiopians. And, you know, they moved through the land in India. So it's just a, um, a carbon being, uh, a dark man back in that time. Brown skin, man. So that's all Lord Shiva is. As an alcohol drinker and a smoker of marijuana. This is very confusing to the common man who thinks that gods should not indulge in these evil acts. To understand this, let's go back in time many thousand years ago and assume that human beings were primitive. We have about 400,000 species of plants. How did we find out which plants can be used as food and which plants are poisonous? Which plants make you sick and which plants heal the sickness? The ancient Indian system of medicine called Siddha documents more than 100,000 plants and their medical uses. How were these documented? In fact, their documentation is so accurate that even today they are being absorbed into modern allopathic medicine. For example, in the year 2000, a medicine called Virohap was launched to treat hepatitis B. The manufacturers of this medicine have openly stated that they extracted the chemical from the herb mentioned in ancient Indian texts and made them into pills. It is now available all around the world and is accepted by doctors as a very effective medicine. So, how were such advanced medicines documented at least 2,000 years ago in India? According to traditional Siddha medicine, Shiva comes from a planet called Shivaloka and begins experimenting and documenting the properties of plants on Earth. These experimental techniques and results were then passed on to 18 saints who documented the rest of the plant. Hold on, I just want to say something. Lord Shiva um, depicted with the staff, right? And you know, through, like on in the Bible, oh, you know, God got a staff. All the ancient Egyptians got a staff. And you connect that staff with some of the gods. And his staff is like a three, an upside down three. It means past, beginning, and end. So it's symbolic. And then the snake represents the um, fear, you being able to conquer your fear. And you think about how we use the snake in ancient Egypt, symbolic sy symbolism of the snake, too. So, you know, so that's just something to think about, too. 
Of course, historians and other experts will tell us that this is nonsense and ancient Indians found out these properties of plants by trial and error or by accident. But we have solid evidence that ancient Indians tested these plants just like modern day scientists. In the ancient Hoysaleswara temple, we can see this strange carving. What does it show? It shows an alcoholic drink called toddy being extracted from palm trees and collected into a container on the ground. But you can see something extraordinary. The saint is watching two animals, a bird and a snake, drinking from the container. It actually shows they were testing the effect of alcohol on... I'm going to pause it right there. The bird and the snake, think about that all through history. Um, the bird and the snake been symbolic. You know, the serpent and the eagle, the dove, uh, the crow. You know, there's many birds. The hawk, uh, the raven. You know, so. And then, you know, you got the ancient Egyptian pharaohs. They always got the... Uh, the snake, it represents something, so you, you know what I'm talking about, look that up, check that out. Animals first, before beginning to use it on human beings. This is exactly what scientists do today. They test it on animals first, before giving it to humans. Right next to the carving of animal testing, Watch how a man gives a similar container full of toddy to a woman, and the woman is clearly refusing it. Look at the hand gesture. But why make alcohol at all? Isn't it evil to drink alcohol? Why are these things even carved on a temple? Indian traditional medicine explains alcohol and other intoxicants as absolutely necessary for performing surgeries. Take the simple case of tooth extraction. How can we do this without sedating someone? After all, ancient Indian texts explain complex surgeries like eye operations, amputations, and even plastic surgeries. The ancient text called Sushruta Samhita clearly explains how alcohol must be given to patients before surgery. But what about weed? Why is Lord Shiva shown smoking pot? Today, Mary... You see? See, it's like the marijuana plant. You think about some of the, in the, in the book, in the Bible, the Tree of Life. And in Egypt, you got the, the marijuana plant on the wall. You know what I'm saying? You go look it up. And then you got um, some people say, what what they do now? It, it, it help old people, cataracts, all that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like some of the sacred plants. They already knew about it. Lord Shiva knew about it, obviously. Marijuana is thought of as a drug, but it was considered a sacred medicinal plant in India. Lord Shiva, who's the father of traditional Siddha medicine, was the first to test marijuana on animals and on himself before giving it out to human beings. Popularly known in India as ganja or bong, it was used to relieve anxiety and pain since 2000 BC, which is 4000 years ago. Ancient Indian tradition recommends using marijuana once a year to maintain good mental and physical health. This is why weed is smoked in India and Nepal by devotees on the night dedicated to Shiva. The medical properties of marijuana are well documented in ancient texts. It stops nausea and increases appetite. It can relieve muscle spasms and treat many other diseases. There is also a cult called Agoris. These people have dedicated their lives to Shiva. They smoke on a weekly basis 
and claim it keeps their brain sharp. A recent study in the United States shows that THC, an active ingredient in marijuana, can prevent and treat Alzheimer's disease and can keep the brain sharp. We see a very interesting pattern emerging in the Western world. People who have denounced and ridiculed the use of marijuana by Hindus, calling it a barbaric or evil act, are slowly turning in favor of medical marijuana. We now have medical marijuana legalized in more than 30 states in the U.S. and in 15 countries. So now you know why Shiva is shown smoking pot and drinking alcohol. Nothing is evil about it as long as you know how to use it, just like any other tool you have. If you Oh, yeah, that's just a little bit about Lord Shiva. Uh, yeah, so subscribe to my channel if you, you know what I'm saying, you you interested and you like going, you know, talking about the gods or whatever. Um, I got Lord Thoth coming, Lord Gamesh, Lord Amen. I got some gods coming, so just, just chill, man. Subscribe and see you soon.